Fryavia is both exciting and disappointing. Exciting because her unit has references to previous appearances, and disappointing because the developers failed to follow up with her story in any conceivable way. Fryavia's Trustmaster reward is a materia that lets your unit equip swords and boost attack, magic, and limit burst damage by 50%. This is actually a very strong combination. Given the number of good swords in the game, it's possible for a unit to benefit further from equipping a sword thanks to things like variants, passives, or imperos, but it also does involve a bit of thinking, so it's really not for everyone. Also, unfortunately there's currently no way to filter for enabling specific equipment, but so long as you remember that this exists, you should be able to make good use of this. Her Super Trust Master reward is a two-handed sword with high attack and magic. It also has additional passives. First, it boosts your unit's limit burst damage by 50% and gives them a double killer against demons and reapers. Additionally, when equipped to a Fryavia, it gives her 800 flat attack and magic. Onto her active abilities. In this form, Fryavia uses non-elemental physical attacks that deal magic damage and can scale off morale. Aurora Key, Frost Blossom consumes one fourth of her limit burst gauge to inflict a 135% ice imperil, imbues ice onto your team, boosts her ice damage by 45%, and activates an area effect that further boosts ice damage by another 25%. The next Azure abilities will be improved if they're used after Azure Key, Insistence, On Guard, or the improved version of the given ability. Repos raises Fryavia's stats by 300%, Chains of Boating Shrike raises your team's ice resistance by 80%, and gives them a 50% physical and magic mitigation buff. Once improved, this ability raises the mitigation buffs to 60%, throws away the ice resistance buff, clearly no one needs that, and gives her an extra 300% stored magic buff. Preparation Chains of Chaos Wave Awaken fills everyone else's limit burst gauge by a nice amount, and fills Fryavia's limit burst gauge by 1 6. Once improved, it grants more limit burst crystals to your team, and adds that bonus stored magic boost. Ahamis recovers your team's MP, and chains of absolute zero. Once improved, it recovers more MP, and then gives her that stored magic again. Insistence can be used twice per battle. It raises her ice and light damage by 50%, her limit burst damage by 300%, then gives her a 500% stored magic buff. Passives but for Trustmaster Reward or Super Trustmaster Reward equipped, Fryavia will gain a Guts buff and a double killer against beasts, demons, and human enemies. Furthermore, her normal attack will be changed to Aurora Blade, which chains a Boating Shrike, and has a similar but weaker effect as Preparation. Even without this locked passive, she has a pretty hefty killer set. Beasts, humans, and reapers, has a big boost to her limit burst damage, a nice boost to her limit burst gauge, and has a lot of evasion as well. Furthermore, she meets the maximum amount of limit burst regen, though it's not enough to activate Frost Blossom without any help. She prefers to carry a single weapon, and meets half to boost to the chain limit cap. At EX plus 2, she'll get 300 attack and magic, and will automatically activate Elegant Spellblade when she enters the battle, filling her limit burst gauge. At EX plus 3, she gains extra attack and magic, plus the other half to that boost to the chain limit cap. Let's look at her limit burst. It inflicts a 30% sword in peril, lowers their ice resistance by 135%, use a single hit that scales with morale, and gives Fryavia an 80% physical and magical mitigation buff. Time to change forms. Frostblade Fryavia has a true brave shift, which has no limitations whatsoever. Onto her active abilities. In this form, Fryavia deals non-elemental physical damage that scales with morale. Azure Key, on guard, needs the same amount of limit burst crystals as Frost Blossom, but in return it raises her stats by 400%, cures any breaks on her, gives her resistance to said breaks, and raises the damage modifiers of her physical attacks. Dawn Radiance lowers her enemy's light resistance by 120%, imbues light onto Fryavia, then raises her light damage by 50%. The following Aurora abilities act similarly to those of her base form. When used after a specific ability, namely Frost Blossom, Pressure, or the improved version of the given ability, it receives several improvements. Coupe inflicts an 80% full break, a 120% ice and light imperil, raises Fryavia's stats by 300%, and chains of Boating Shrike. Once improved, the full break rises to 85%, the imperils to 130%, and the ability will also fill her limit burst gauge by one third. Bind inflicts an 80% full break on all enemies, and chains of Absolute Mirror of Equity. Once improved, the full break rises to 85%, and she gets that one third limit burst fill. Flick inflicts a 30% Sword Imperil and Chains of Boating Shrike. Once improved, that Sword Imperil stays the same, but she does get Limit Burst Crystals. Aurora Key, Pressure, can be used twice per battle. It dispels your enemies, then inflicts a 85% Attack and Magic Break, a 88% Defense and Spirit Break, and lowers Ice and Light Resistance by 135%. Passives, they're literally the same. Let's look at her Limit Burst. 
It lowers the enemy's accuracy by 50%, then raises Fryavia's limit burst damage by 250%, and then deals a single blow that scales the morale. It also fills the morale gauge too. Let's rank brave abilities. They're all very strong. Raise Azure Key, Frost Blossom to raise her Ice and Peril and Amplification buffs, On Guard to raise her stats and damage modifiers, and Aurora Key, Pressure, to raise her defensive breaks and imperils. Time to make a damage rotation. We'll start with her base form, meaning magic, and I'll stick with ice. It'd be nice if you can give her a few extra limit burst crystals somehow, but to keep things consistent, I'll just assume you can't. On turn 1, switch forms. Cast Aurora Key, Pressure, Aurora, Flick, and Aurora, Coupe. On turn 2, cast Azure Key, On Guard, and double cast Aurora, Flick. On turn 3, switch back. Cast Aurora Key, Frost Blossom, double cast Azure, Preparation, and Azure Key, Insistence. On turn 4, use her Limit Burst. On turn 5, activate her Brave Shift, cast Azure Key, On Guard, and double cast Aurora, Flick. From here, switch back to her base form and quadruple cast any of the upgraded abilities. I'm thinking preparation for those limit burst crystals, and make sure to reapply Frost Blossom when it wears off. Don't forget about the bust from Azure Key, Insistence either, and remember to follow it up with her limit burst to make use of that stored magic. Now, physical damage. We'll stick with ice in this form as well. On turn 1, cast Azure Key, Insistence, Azure, Repost, and double cast Azure, Preparation. On turn 2, cast Aurora Key, Frost Blossom, and triple cast Azure, Preparation. On turn 3, switch forms. Cast Azure Key, On Guard, Aurora Key, Pressure, and Aurora, Flick. On turn 4, triple cast Aurora, Flick. On turn 5, use her Limit Burst. Repeat the rotation from here. Though, when you switch back, if it's possible to consolidate Insistence and Frost Blossom within the same turn, make sure to do so so you can switch back faster. So, EX2. Fryavia's EX Awakenings are pretty impressive. Not only does she get Warring Spirit and Indestructible Light, but both EX plus 2 and EX plus 3 also gives her additional stats. Admittedly, it's rather rare that you'll need Fryavia's full limit burst gauge at the start of the fight, and while it does give you immediate access to her standard brave abilities, it shouldn't really be that hard to get 3 more crystals to fulfill that cost within the first turn. Ultimately though, the stats are nice, her Super Trust Master reward is nice, and another indestructible light is always nice. So how good is Frostblade Fryavia? She's got 4 different rows, and with a true brave shift, it's relatively easy to access each end of her skill set. Just with that, she's certainly an excellent unit but let's take the time to scrutinize each row separately too. When it comes to support, some of her buffs are a bit unorthodox. Her ice support is an exception which easily takes center stage with that strong amplification buff plus an added area effect. Her limit burst and MP recovery can be rather strong, especially if you choose to multicast them. The mitigation is nice, but most strong tanks provide that anyways. The ice resistance is niche and outright disappears once the ability is improved. And that's pretty much the extent of her support. But while it's true that it doesn't seem like a lot, that Ice buff and Limit Burst fill can see some clever use. Now, let's flip sides and take a look at her as the buffer. She's got two Elemental Imperils, Ice and Light, and a strong 30% Sword Imperil too. Unfortunately, the Elemental Imperils aren't at the same level as those dedicated Breakers, though they're definitely more than acceptable. As for Breaks, we see she ranges from 80-85% to for Attack and Magic, and up to 88% for Defense and Spirit. Now unfortunately when it comes to breaks and imperils, the largest numbers will ultimately overshadow any lesser increments, even though these numbers are very good already. We have to take into account that she can maintain these checks with relative ease as well, which certainly works in her favor. And finally, the biggest rose, damage. She clearly excels of ice and light, and thanks to her innate flexibility, she can always be a light magic damage dealer or a ice physical attacker, or really anything else, depending on her support. Furthermore, once certain variance changes kick in for magic, her magic damage output will see a dramatic increase. But of course the same pretty much goes for a number of other magic damage dealers too, so it's not something particular for her. Still, when it comes to her limit bursts, they're… oddly, kind of weak. Now, in practice, she's a strong unit thanks to her abilities, well with their powerful effects, her passives and buffs, and of course her debuffs, but the modifiers here really could have been better. Nevertheless, this is just a nitpick. When it comes to physical damage, her ice damage is top tier, in part because not so many excel with ice in the first place. But with that in mind, while her light damage is certainly just as capable, it's not going to hold up very well against her current king and upcoming fusion boy. Her magic damage dealing capabilities are pretty similar. When it comes to ice, she beats out newest candidate Mediana, which I find extraordinarily funny. No wonder they finally decide to release her. When it comes to light though, she does face much better competition, but it's not to the same extent as her physical form. 
Of course, when it comes to morale, she does get a much better showing, but still faces competition from units like Sky, Carton, and Roberta. Ultimately, Fryavia doesn't set a new standard when it comes to numbers, but that's perfectly fine, as her damage output is still rather impressive. In the end, Fryavia is a great unit, strong damage output, extremely flexible, reliable debuffs, and niche but useful support. Still, had any one of these components been missing, Fryavia wouldn't be all that impressive, given that the only role where she stands supreme is ice support. Nevertheless, she's a strong addition to many teams, and a fine unit in her own right. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe. Comment below if you got Frostblade Fryavia, and if you do, how you plan to get her. Her current special banner showcases this ticket, which can be used to get one of four strong equipment. But you could also save 3000 lapis by just sticking with this banner here for 8 tickets, and doing the first 2 steps here to get the last 2 tickets. As for me, I think I'll hold off on getting her, though she certainly has many strong points, boasts a high degree of flexibility, and popular chaining options, it's nothing I really feel like I need to get at the moment. That might change in the future, but for now, I'll just keep my hopes high that I manage to get her off banner.